last session, we stopped here. We actually finished this paper. And the idea was that we wanted to translate text to images. So previously we were captioning, which was translating images to captions, to text. Here it was, if I give you a text, can you give me the corresponding image? And you were generating images. And this was the first time that you were generating images. And uh, we introduced a couple of techniques. The technique that we used was that we wanted to turn our images and tokenize it the same way that we were tokenizing our text. And if we manage to do that, we can actually use an autoregressive transformer to generate images for us. So the problem boiled down to taking an image and then turning into tokens. So basically tokenizing it. And the method that we said we are going to use was variational autoencoder, and in particular, discrete variational autoencoder, because we wanted Z to be discrete. So today, I'm going to continue with variational autoencoders. And actually, you can use variational autoencoders to generate images. So you can One application is to take your images and tokenize them. Another application is generate. Use it as a generative model to generate images. So let's continue with that. We are going to stick to generative networks for a while. And uh, I'm going to start with variational autoencoders. So what do we want to do? So I'm here. We want to generate images that look like uh, numbers, that look like the MNIST data. So these are fake images. And we want to generate images that look like real data. So what do we have? We have a data set. This is unlabeled. So now we are in the regime of unsupervised machine learning. You have a bunch of data. There is no labels for them. These are IID samples from some distribution. This distribution could be continuous or discrete. So there is some distribution in the real world that is generating these images, and we are sampling from that. And that's the real distribution. That's a distribution of the real data. And our task is to learn that distribution or try to learn that and approximate it. And once you do that, you can generate samples that are going to look like real data. And I'm going to tell you about the applications in a few lines. But for now, that's our objective. Somebody gives us unlabeled data. These are IID samples from a continuous or discrete distribution. And we want to generate samples that look like this. Or basically, you want to learn the underlying distribution of your data. Okay, Because we want to use neural networks, neural networks need an input. And that's why we are going to say, let's say there is some unobserved and latent continuous random variable, z. Because then this could be the input to our neural network. We don't know what that is. But let's say there is some unobserved random variable. In the previous paper, that unobserved random variable was discrete because we were using it for tokenization purposes. Here it is continuous. So if I tell you the continuous version, it's going to be very easy for you guys to extend it to, this, to discrete cases. So let's say Z is some unobserved. You don't observe it. You don't have any observations on that. You can generate samples from some prior distribution, samples of Z from some prior distribution. So whenever I say a prior distribution, this is an assumption that you make. So you have freedom to choose whatever that you want here. This could be normal distribution, this could be uniform distribution, or whatever distribution that, that you like. Okay, you can generate samples from that. Then there is also your likelihood. This is where you're gonna put your neural network. Z is gonna go in and X is gonna come out. For instance, a vector is gonna go in and an image is going to come out, the image of a number. And that's going to be your uh, conditional distribution, your likelihood. And this is usually called your generative model because you're generating, you're using it to sample. And this is a decoder because it is decoding. Maybe Z is your code, and then you're decoding an image out of it. So there are various names for this. But uh, in the end, what you're interested in is this guy, your marginal likelihood. You don't care what Z is. You want to learn the underlying distribution of your X, your data. So Z was there just to help you out. So we need to marginalize it out. You need to integrate Z out. And that's going to give you a marginal likelihood. And this is the guy that you're going to take a log and try to maximize. 
Okay, so you are always looking after this guy. You don't care about the likelihood. You don't care about your prior distribution. You care about the marginal likelihood because this is the one that is going to give you the objective function to maximize. But there is a problem with that. This is intractable. If this guy has a is a uh, neural network, then it's going to be a nightmare taking its integral with respect to some prior distribution. And if this is normal distribution, this is going to be intractable to compute. In a similar way, your posterior is going to be intractable to compute because P of theta is showing up here. This is tractable. This guy, the likelihood you can compute, the prior distribution you can compute, the marginal likelihood you cannot compute, it's intractable, and the posterior is also intractable. So we need to somehow get rid of the posterior. And what we are going to do, before I go into the details of how we are going to solve that problem, I promise that I'm going to give you the applications. It could be image denoising in painting, super resolution. The super resolution one has applications in video games. So it's going to help you transfer maybe low resolution images to your users, and then perhaps on their computer, turn those images into high resolution and show them high quality images or high quality video. So this has real applications. So our problem is this. This is intractable. This is intractable. So in painting, the question is, what is in painting? For in painting, uh, somehow, do you remember these old images that somehow some part of the image is, uh, uh, is not showing, is removed? And you want to imagine what's going to happen in that part. OK, does that answer your question? OK, perfect. So this is our problem. We don't know our posterior. You, whenever you don't know something, you're going to approximate it. So let's try to approximate that your posterior with a distribution. So it's going to take your input, your images, and it's going to encode it. So Z is now going to be encoded version of X. And this is your encoder. And you can actually think of it as probabilistic encoder, because this is a distribution. And this is an approximation to your posterior. OK? So we need to somehow get rid of this P and replace it with Q. And this guy has its own parameters. It has its own fees. And I'm sure you guessed it, you're going to approximate this by a neural network. Okay? So there is going to be one neural network here. There is going to be another neural network here. One is the encoder. The other one is the decoder. We made an assumption here. We made that these are IID samples from some distribution. So these are independent. And because they are independent, the likelihood of your entire data is the product of its members. So this is just a product of P of theta xi's. You take a log, you turn the product into a summation, and that's going to give you your objective function that you want to optimize. So we just took a log of this guy. So now let's focus on one sample at a time. This was the entire data set. Now we can focus on one sample at a time. So let's focus on this term. That term is going to come out of the definition of your posterior distribution and this marginal likelihood definition. Basically, what you're doing is you multiply and divide by Q of phi, and then rearrange the furniture so that your expectations are with respect to Q of phi. So this one, I'm going to leave an, as an exercise. It's very easy. It's just rearranging the furniture. And if you run into trouble, there is a tutorial that I put online. You can take a look at that. So you arrange the furniture, log of P of theta xi is now the KL divergence of Q of phi, P of theta, and then a function of theta, phi, and your data. Okay. Now the cool thing is that this is a divergence, it's KL divergence. So it's a measure of your distance, distance between two distributions. So it's always non-negative. And this is the only term that your posterior is showing up in. So this one is just a joint distribution, which is the product of your prior distribution and likelihood. So this term you know. This term is some assumptions that you made. This is your encoder. This, uh, I'm going to tell you how to sample from this distribution next, because you need to turn this into Monte Carlo and approximate it with Monte Carlo method. But this term is the only one that is having a posterior distribution. Because this is positive, or non-negative, you can get rid of that. Why? 
because if you get rid of that, this term is gonna give you a lower bound for your log likelihood. If you maximize this, you're gonna maximize the other term. You're gonna maximize your likelihood. So this term you can get rid of, and you're gonna work with this L, the lower bound. Okay, now our problem is trying to sample from this guy because you need to estimate it using Monte Carlo methods. So you need to be able to sample from your uh, variational distribution. So this guy is called variational distribution. And that's why you have the variational name in the name of the paper, okay? So now we need to sample from this. How are we gonna do it? There is this reparameterization trick. What is the idea? You want to sample from Q of V, okay? This is a complicated distribution. Probably you cannot sample from it but you can sample from an easier distribution, maybe some auxiliary distribution. So you can sample from that. That's your noise model. You sample one sample from that, you push it through a differentiable function, differentiable transformation. Why do we need it to be differentiable? Because you want to take, you want to do backpropagation when you're doing the maximum likelihood. So it needs to be differentiable. You generate samples from a simple distribution, push it through a function, and it's gonna give you samples from your Q of phi. So this is a very important technique, and we are gonna build upon that to actually get rid of the likelihood in uh, the next papers, okay? So now you have this L of phi, L of theta phi xi. This e expectation, you can approximate it by Monte Carlo method. So it's gonna be one over L. These are the number of samples that you're generating from this epsilon. There is going to be a summation. And then these are your terms. Okay, just rearrange. This is log of P of theta x i and z, log of P of theta x i and z. And the other term is here. Okay. And what is z i l? You have epsilon l, which is a sample from your auxiliary distribution. You sample from that. Why is it a function of i and l? Because you have your data here. This is your image. And you have the sample that you just generated and you're pushing it through a function. This is gonna be where you're gonna have your neural network. Okay, so far so good. This method is very general, and, I, and as you can see, I'm explaining it in the generic format, but if you go specific, you put a functional form or you made some assumptions for your likelihood, you make some assumptions for your variational distribution, then it's gonna be called variational autoencoder. And we're gonna see what those assumptions are. The first assumption, is this prior distribution. Let's assume you're gonna sample from normal with mean zero and a standard deviation one. So that's your prior assumption. The likelihood, I'm gonna deal with it later because that depends on the task that you have at hand. Now let's uh, try to model this log of Q of phi of Z given XI. You can say this is normal with mean where mu is a neural network. It takes an image and it's gonna output, it's gonna encode it your variance, you can also put a neural network there. So there is also another neural network there. And this is where the reparameterization trick is gonna come in. Now you need to sample from this normal distribution, okay? You can actually go ahead and define your G of phi, which is a function of epsilon and X to be the mean plus the standard deviation times your epsilon. And now you sample from a simple distribution. You sample from a distribution with mean zero and identity. If this is normal, then the distribution of this, this G of phi is gonna be also normal. The mean is gonna be mu of X and the standard deviation is gonna be sigma of X. Okay, now you get this reparameterization trick idea. And in terms of the likelihood, that depends on what you want to do. If your data are in the form of text and we know that you're gonna tokenize them, then your distribution has to be a discrete distribution. If your distribution, if your data are in the form of images, like what you have in MNIST, then you can make a Gaussian assumption for your distribution, for your likelihood. And basically this is gonna have a mean and a standard deviation. A code is gonna go in and then you're gonna encode it to an image. And that's gonna be the mean of your distribution is gonna be a neural network, okay? Now you have everything. You know this lower bound. You're gonna maximize the lower bound. First, you're gonna approximate it by Monte Carlo method. You're gonna sample from that. You're gonna maximize it with respect to theta and phi. 
and then you are going to be able to generate samples. Because once you learn this distribution, you can generate samples from your prior, push them through your neural network to give you images. It's going to give you fake images. And there is another cool thing that's going to happen. The Z that you're going to learn, the, the hidden state or the unobserved or latent state of your system is going to have meanings. For instance, you can do interpolation between images. You can uh, change the pose. So now you're changing your Z, you're interpolating your Z. And in the generated images, you're going to have poses. One of them is looking to the left, right, straight at the camera. And then you can uh, make somebody who is angry or sad to be happy. Okay. Any questions? Is everything clear? Would Z just be like for the, for the digits example, Z would be a scalar that ranges from zero to nine, or is it not necessarily interpretable like that? Z is going to be a vector. It's a low dimensional vector. Okay. And let's say it is in uh, R256. So it's a vector. That's why it has a mean zero. That's a vector. And this is an identity yeah. matrix. Yeah. So you take an image that is, in this case, I guess it's 28 by 28. You first encode it using your variational distribution. It's 28 by 28 by one channel, because this is only gray channel. And then you encode it into a vector, a low dimensional vector, let's say R100. And then here you take that R100 and map it back to your original image. So this is going to be an, a convolution going on. This is a convolutional neural network. This is going to be a deconvolution. And don't worry about the structure of your neural networks because now we are in the regime that we care about the loss function. Okay. And this is our loss function. Any other questions? Okay, perfect.